pathogenetic treatment with BRCA associated ovarian cancer. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you, colleagues. Let me start my presentation with the first slide. My presentation is about personalization of uh, of patients with uh, ovarian cry uh, ovarian cancer. Just to remind you that ovarian uh, cancer belongs to a heterogeneous. Uh, group of tumors and uh, we differentiate high grade and low grade uh, tumors. 65% uh, of all serous ovarian tumors are high grade tumors. Um, the high grade uh, tumor constitute the biggest patient group uh, that follow the second pathogenesis where the uh, clinical picture is aggressive, but uh, those patients are responsive to standard platinum therapy, and this group of uh, pa patients who have high grade demonstrate uh, TP53 mutations as well as BRCA1 and 2. What age groups are we talking about? Uh, with breast cancers, we talk about uh, family um, inheritance with uh, age. But for ovarian cancer, you can see that the average, the average age is uh, 60, around 60 years older. And uh, the same refers to BRCA1 and BRCA2. The age is essentially the same. Almost every fourth patient with a BRCA2 mutation can be over 60. Talking about the number of incidents with BRCA mutation, you could see the geography spread in Russia. It's 20 to 19 percent in uh, overall uh, ovarian cancer populations and 14, 17 percent with serosal type. That's the data from Petrov Oncology Institute and Russian Academy of Medicine. Now we're gathering uh, overall na nationwide uh, Russian statistics in uh, Asian uh, countries uh, we have different types of mutation we could see that with the example of Kazan <coughs> talking about the European part of the continent uh, we test all the patients with BRCA mutations and with them those uh, figures numbers almost reach 20 percent so each fifth patient has a BRCA mutation talking about family background the purple shows a family background, but the blue one shows no family inheritance but BRCA mutation. In Russia, unfortunately, our genealogy is lost, but we get the same data even from Europe that people who do not have a breast cancer or ovarian cancer in the family can have BRCA mutation. BRCA1-2 mutation can um, induce ovarian cancer, but with those patients, the forecast is slightly better. That's the result of 26 major trials that uh, shows that with BRCA mutation patients, the uh, overall survival rate is over 52%, whereas for non-mutated type, it's uh, less than 40%. Some other research on uh, intrapineal uh, chemotherapy, we have uh, the uh, champions of this uh, 
camels here in the room and with them the uh, efficacy of this chemotherapy was uh, better with the MRCA mutated patients. As far as the sensitivity to chemo is concerned, yes. All our patients receive a G1 and other platinum containing medications. But uh, where we have uh, somatic and uh, germinal mutations, the uh, efficacy of uh, platinum therapy is uh, higher compared to patients without those mutations. Talking about the relapses, uh, sometimes patients uh, have those after platinum treatment and uh, they have a platinum sensitive uh, relapse with those patients the number of brce uh, one two mutation is even higher it's up to 30 to 40 patients another research was uh, dedicated to was made by safra and he analyzed the uh, patients with BRCA M status uh, and uh, the impact of uh, cytostatic therapy and uh, the combination of antracycline was the most effective uh, with antracycline uh, liposomal doxorubicin or doxomycin those combinations were more effective compared uh, to toxane plus platinum. What are the uh, specificity of BRCA-associated ovarian cancer? The forecast for this uh, patients is slightly better. Those patients are more responsive to platinum therapy, but there is uh, another option of uh, targeted therapy for those patients. What is this therapy based upon? Here we can see the uh, 19th uh, research that the second phase, the double masked uh, blind uh, randomized uh, trial with patients uh, having a platinum sensitive relapses. That's the design of the research. Some patients were stabilized and after that they uh, had the platinum sensitive relapse. After a full uh, response or stabilization or any other positive effect, uh, they received uh, VPB in one arm, in the second arm they received a placebo until uh, the progression was achieved. The final point was to evaluate the uh, PFS and uh, the second thing was to check the OS, the um, ORR, the tolerance, and finally the, the life quality of patients. What were the first results uh, that were <coughs> analyzed, including all patients, uh, both uh, BRCA positive and negative? After chemo and stabilization, the supportive medicine with the aloparib was the best. The survival median was uh, almost four months uh, higher in the group with the supportive therapy. But the effect was even better with BRCA positive patients. At the beginning of the trial, not all the patients um, were checked for uh, BRCA test, but retrospectively it was made and uh, it, here it turned out that among BRCA mutated patients the results were higher with the alloparil compared to placebo and uh, the results are effectively eight months higher. So we could uh, primarily conclude that this OS with the patients having BRCA mutation was uh, almost seven months uh, longer compared to those without. Further on, the, uh, the administration of further chemotherapy was uh, prolonged by nine months in uh, a group of patients uh, with the patients with aloparib and further chemo 
took uh, place uh, later, which is important for the quality of life. The second uh, point uh, in case is the OS, not just the PFS, which is a good thing, but the overall survival cannot always be achieved with targeted therapy, but uh, here again with BRCA positive uh, patients it was higher. The uh, survival median was uh, 30, 4, 35 months compared to the uh, those without. So that essentially gives us eight months more. When we analyzed the research uh, even further, it showed that with the secondary analysis, the survival rate was higher in the respective group. But some centers unofficially administered aloparib with the progressive disease. It was not a pure clinical <coughs> trial. So it was also a kind of experiment. Uh, and. Uh, they proved to manage uh, that uh, Aloparil gave eight uh, months more survival rate compared to other kind of target therapy. In this trial, the second phase indicated that both PFS and OS uh, grew longer when they evaluated retrospectively patients uh, that were BRCA positive. So those are statistically proven differences. Olaparib is a target medication. Of course, it does have uh, side effects. And um, it was our another point in uh, case the uh, side effects are there. It could be nausea, vomiting, neutralipia, and some others. Although there were no uh, side effects of uh, third and fourth uh, grade, part of the uh, patients that were prognostically positive received uh, aloparib for over three years. That's uh, over 14% of overall population and 18% with uh, BRCA mutation. So that means that even long-lasting administration of Oloparib uh, did not result in uh, major severe side effects. What else should we mention talking about uh, the quality of life that uh, patients uh, told uh, us about uh, themselves? Uh, we compared Oloparib and uh, placebo evaluated the uh, quality life uh, surveys with the patients who said that um, with the target therapy they didn't experience the um, worsening of the life quality. Research, 19th research said that the side effects were not uh, highly manifested and uh, this therapy would not impact significantly the quality of life of patients. This uh, medication was uh, registered after the second stage of a randomized blind trial for practical application in Europe. You can see how close are the dates. Uh, in July 2016, this medication was registered in Russia already as a supportive therapy for patients with uh, platinum sensitive uh, relapses and with the BRCA mutation who were responsive to further therapy when uh, we received at least partial response, they are offered uh, Olaparib targeted therapy. That's the uh, ISMO recommendations that this uh, drug should be administered to patients with BRCA mutation as a support therapy. Rusko also included this uh, medication uh, for patients with platinum sensitive relapses. That means that uh, 
the uh, drug uh, is already recommended by Russian uh, oncology institutions. Once again, that's the algorithm for platinum-sensitive relapses. When we have, once again, a BRCA positive test, patients that are platinum-sensitive should be offered to receive uh, Olaparib-supportive uh, therapy to 400 milligram a day. That is uh, 16 uh, pills a day. Maybe it's not that convenient to take eight uh, pills in the morning and eight pills in the afternoon. Uh, you see, it, it may be a little bit complicated, but at the same time, there is uh, 16 uh, pills give us uh, some flexibility to reduce uh, the uh, those uh, quantitatively uh, as opposite to some targeted uh, medications that uh, patients take one uh, pill a day only. What uh, further research is needed here? Patients with uh, highly malignant tumors should be tested for hormonal and somatic mutations, and for them we should decide we should consider the um, opportunity to use uh, Olaparil uh, with uh, ovarian cancer patients with BRCA mutation. That's uh, what is recommended, but we don't always do that. Uh, currently, due to the RUSCO program supported by AstraZeneca, we have the opportunity to survey the platinum sensitive uh, patients with the relapses for those patients we can see if uh, they have a brca mutation and uh, with uh, the blood serum we can uh, understand if they have a somatic uh, or hormonal mutation it's uh, also good to take some uh, tissue to differentiate the somatic and hormonal mutation, but uh, blood is okay too. Upon uh, the receipt of results, if we could see that those patients are BRCA positive, we have uh, combined uh, platinum positive therapy. If the effect is positive, it's recommended in the eight uh, weeks uh, after the remission to offer the support uh, therapy with Aloparib. Thank you.